Hey, everybody, this is Heidi St. John. Thanks for tuning in. You guys have found me right here at the intersection of faith and culture. This is the Off the Bench podcast. And today I've got my friend, Dr. Mark Sherwood, back on the show by popular demand. And we're going to spend the next 20 minutes or so answering listener questions. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to find some encouragement for the new year. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, today's podcast is being sponsored in part by MyPillow. You guys know I love this company and I'm sleeping on their mattress right now. They've got a great sale happening for you and you can take advantage of it. You can get up to 60% off of whatever you find at the MyPillow website right now, including their mattress system by going to MyPillow.com and using the promo code Heidi. Mattresses come in coil and foam and I'm telling you what, you guys, I've had mine now for two years and I super love it. Check it out. Call 1-800-447-0541 or visit MyPillow.com and use the promo code Heidi to save an astonishing amount on the complete mattress system today. Again, the deal's not going to last long. Enter promo code Heidi and save 50% today. All right, you guys, you know that I love my guest today. And uh, Dr. Mark Sherwood has been on my show many, many times in the last year and in fact has become one of the most requested people to come on the show. I love that he really is a hope dealer and we're going to deal a little bit of hope today. Dr. Mark Sherwood, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me again. And I am full of hope and ready to give it out today. So it's going to be a good one. I'm excited. Let's start with Rachel. So you and I kind of went back through, we have hundreds of questions that come into the queue and sometimes they get missed. And I've, we found this one just sort of wandering around the internet and uh, we're going to get back to it. This one came in back in the month of May from a listener whose name is Rachel. She writes in to say, Dr. Mark, I am nearing the end of my fifth pregnancy. And she had these five pregnancies back to back. So I'm assuming that Rachel's already had her baby by now, but I think this is going to encourage some other people. She said she has always always struggle with postpartum depression and anxiety. We've talked about this before on the show, but I think particularly it's good for us to touch on this, Mark, in the winter months because it's harder even when you can't get outside, when it's snowing or cold or whatever it is. She wants to know if you have any tips for dealing with it. She's never felt it was severe enough to see anyone, but she's looking for more natural ways to help manage it. Well, Rachel, that's a great question. And obviously, we're going to presume you've already had your child, and uh, it might be, in, you might be pregnant again by now. You're on a good, pretty good roll there. But here's the thing, Rachel. Those a couple things, and I think to tag on to what Heidi said is number one is, you know, winter months for anybody can create a little bit of depression. It's called seasonal affective disorder. Acronym spelled out sad, of course, much like standard American diet. Another story, a different day. But the point being is vitamin D is critical. The further north of the equator you live and the darker your skin you have, those are two key reasons why you need more D. Everybody, including you, Rachel, need 5,000 international units of D per day. You're going to be safe with that dose. You might need to go more, but 5,000 is your dose. And don't believe that you can get sufficiency of vitamin D synthesis anymore from the sun. I have seen this not work over and over again. We just don't develop develop this um, vitamin D anymore because I think of toxins probably in the atmosphere Mm -hmm. and probably in our skin. The second thing I want you to keep in mind, Rachel, is this, is the second and third trimesters of your pregnancy, the organ called the placenta takes over the production of your progesterone, which is that hormone that actually helped with sleep and anxiety. When you deliver those babies, you deliver the placenta too. So why do ladies have postpartum or post-delivery depression? It's because they lose the progesterone. A couple of things you can do. Obviously, you can reach out to your doc and see if they'll prescribe a little bit of oral micronized bioidentical progesterone, or you can actually get it at a less than prescriptive dose at about 20 milligrams, through even through us if you want to. It's called progest avail progest avail and it actually works and so that's an oil-based one that one you can put a little bit on your wrist or behind your neck and typically it helps a lot with that depressive symptom 
It's a really big deal. I think we don't talk about it enough. And uh, I've done an entire episode with my daughter, Savannah, who really struggled with postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And it was a, I mean, it she really, that was a, that was a hard season for her. And I told her, and I love that you'd mentioned vitamin D. Vitamin D was a game changer for me. And in the regular months, I take 5,000 I use a day. In the winter months, I go to 10,000. And the reason I did that was because several years ago, I was struggling with all kinds of just weird sort of symptoms. My bones hurt. I just felt like, ugh, I don't feel good. And uh, my doctor, shockingly, this is before the Rona, uh, said, why don't we test your vitamin D levels? And I was down to pretty near zero. And wow. so, I mean, they put me on like a mega dose and I did a mega dose for probably two weeks. I mean, it was an extreme amount of vitamin D, but I felt better within 48 hours. It was unbelievable. And so I'm just here to sort of say, listen, I, I just have a personal testimony. Vitamin D makes a difference. And I, I love that you said that we can't just count on the sun because people no. say, oh, I just sit in my window and I'm going to soak in some vitamin D. But uh, you got to get a good one too, right? They want You want uh, yeah. people to get a good vitamin D. Can we get a vitamin D from you? You can. And I like the vitamin, it's called Bio D K. Bio D K. Why do I want K in it? Because K actually helps calcium uh, along with D. K, K kind of directs calcium out of the arteries into the bones, and D helps calcium be absorbed in the gut. So D and K together work really well to not just helping the immune system, but also helping out us from a cardiovascular protective standpoint and also benefiting us from a bone building standpoint. Um, so make sure you put those together. That one actually has exactly what I want in it as far as the composition and the amounts of each. One more thing about postpartum depression I want the listeners to understand is, generally speaking, um, you will not get this kind of conversation at that point in your life. You're going to get more of this conversation. Well, let's put you on this medication to get mm -hmm. your nerves to calm down for a time. But I can tell you, Rachel and everybody else, that you're not born with a medication deficiency, and that does not result in the answer. The answer that we just gave you is is a real solution. Yeah, i i couldn't I couldn't agree more. And as you and I have talked about on the show, you know, we're not saying that there isn't a time that those antidepressant medications are good. But what happens is, and I think this was certainly the case for me. And you and I have talked about this. I mean, they put me on those things and I was on them for 20 years. That's what we want you to avoid. It's just not good for right. you. And uh, there are other options, natural uh, alternatives that will work with your body. And so we want to encourage you guys in that. Uh, absolutely. She also said, this is just a little tag on for you, Mark, that she heard our podcast about ADD and ADHD supplements and she put her four-year-old son on them. She said it has helped him focus so oh. much and not to be uh, as much trouble after she been on the supplement and he's doing really great. He's been on now for seven months. She said her house is so much calmer. So uh, I love that. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, uh, We had an anonymous listener in Kansas City write in to say, she said, Dr. Mark, I recently had labs done that I ordered myself each year to make sure I'm staying healthy. It includes a comprehensive metabolic panel, hep uh, hepatic, is that how you say that? Function panel. She did a yeah. whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, her report came back with a trace protein in her urine and now she's worried because her dad has kidney disease. He's also diabetic. Every other single test of mine was with the normal range and always has been. I am 60. I feel as healthy as ever. Unlike my dad, I've never been overweight, never had high blood pressure, don't take prescription or over-the-counter drugs. I exercise. What Do I need to be concerned about this trace protein? Well, that's a great question because a lot of times we do get alarmed at various markers that are sort of isolated in laboratory analysis. In other words, we'll go to the doctor and get a lab marker and it's either high or low and it's dinged red or green, if you will. And we immediately think in our mind something's quote unquote wrong. But yep. we have a saying here at the Functional Medical Institute that goes like this, one lab equals no lab. In other words, one lab does not dictate a trend. A trend tells you more of a story than one incident. I'll use a stock market, I'll use weather as examples, right? Trends tell a bigger story as opposed to one. When we dump out a little protein in our urine, it is not that abnormal depending on the circumstance. Here's what I mean. You could be a little dehydrated. In other words, not really washing out things correctly. You could have actually went for a workout. And if you go for a workout, you might dump a little bit of protein in your urine. 
It really all is about context. I think the biggest thing about a urine marker is you want to make sure your pH is somewhere around a seven or so, because that would ensure you're not over alkaline and not over acidic. So the main markers to look at in a urine test are not really just protein by itself. So my encouragement to you is don't get hyper-focused on that. Maybe go do another one. And you can actually, if you will, you can go to your drugstore and you can get that same urine panel and you can do it yourself at your home. So there you go. I love it. I'm loving all this information. And uh, we were just talking, Dr. Mark and I were talking before we started recording, you've been helping me with one of my daughters who has pretty severe allergies. And we went ahead and did the the blood, the blood dietary antigen test. And what's crazy, you guys, about that is that test came back and two things that she eats routinely every single morning. And they're actually really good for you. Healthy yep. things her body cannot tolerate them. It's amazing what you find out when you just do a little bit of digging. Like, why Why is my skin? You know, why I'm having eczema? Why is my stomach upset? You guys can get these tests uh, from Dr. Mark. That's what we did. Go to uh, Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi and check it out. It's been uh, life-changing uh, many mm -hmm. times for some of these things in my family. Also, uh, Mark sent me a hydrogen bottle. You have it right there, don't you? I do. This thing's, yeah. this thing's really cool, you guys. If you're watching on YouTube, check it out. Tell us, tell us. So I just actually, this this bottle right now, I, I'll, I'll turn the light on one more time just so people can see the effect of it. Um, this bottle actually has a hydrogen water in it right now. I have infused this thing, so I'm going to pull the cap off here. I was say, I pray the light won't go on again because you've already infused it. I think it's full right now, yeah. Yeah. So this has water in here right now, and I'm going to drink it. Mm-mm-mm. Well, I just got back from Mexico, so salud para todos. That means uh, cheers to everybody. So this is infused with hydrogen, and hydrogen in the water as a carrier actually causes the body to be able to diminish excessive free radical damage. Now, why is that important? Because when we build up free radicals, which are waste products, they'll damage the cells and cause a lot of aging in our bodies. Isn't that crazy? So, so what's the best thing to do to mitigate the aging process is you want to minimize the free radical buildup. And if you drink water, I always look at it like make it count, man. Just make your water count. You got to drink water anyway because the body is 65 or 70 percent water. Why not put hydrogen in it? So molecular hydrogen dissolved in water is a real game changer as far as the ability to make a solid marked difference in your biological aging speed and processes. That is amazing. So the next time I'm here, I'll bring my water bottle and then we can toast each other with our hydrogen okay. bottles. There you go. Yes. Yes. Cool. Salut. You know, they're, not, they're not that expensive. This thing has a nice rechargeable battery on it. It's a couple hundred dollars and people can get these from us if they want to. Um, it has a little separate chamber down here that produces the hydrogen by electrolysis. It puts it in the water. And all you do is take the lid off and drink it. This thing I carry it with me all the time. So that was my next question. So it's not a canister in there. This is actually rechargeable. So it's not like they, they're getting a canister and it's going to run out. No, no. The, the, it's not battery powered. There's a little USB charger right here. So I just plug in. I had it plugged into my uh, computer right now. Just doing this. Yeah. I love it. Easy. I love it. All right. Lee in menopause. <laughs> Lee in menopause. She's also in menopause, <laughs> but go. she's in Washington. <laughs> Lee is in Washington and also in menopause. Uh, she says she's got more dental problems than ever. First concern is how do I detox from multiple dental x-rays? And besides the obvious, any other tips to improve teeth and gum health that doesn't include fluoride? Why is fluoride a bad thing? Yeah. Fluoride is a toxin. Lee, and as a matter of fact, it makes us no sense why we put fluoride in there. Fluoride has been shown to sort of protect enamel, but it doesn't really protect what's inside of those things, right? So Lee, being a menopause, what are the teeth and the gums made out of bone? And why would your teeth be having problems right now? It's because you're not making bone okay. And so you should also investigate the high likelihood that you are even developing osteopenia, maybe even osteoporosis as well. And that's a big deal. So, Lee, I would encourage you to get your hormones checked. Very, very smart. Do that. Relieve your dental uh, burden of fluoride and go a non-fluoride toothpaste. One that I really, really like, and people can use this if they want to, I like, it's called Periobiotic Silver. 
Perio Biotic Silver, and it's got silver in there too. Silver is in sort of this antimicrobial, and you can brush with that. It's got a nice flavor to it, and that's the one that I use every day. Um, also, you want to stay away, Lee, from mouthwash. Anti, this antibacterial mouthwash is a mess. There's a lot of uh, more cleaner mouthwashes you can use out there that have, you know, some essential oils and things like that. But those two things really destroy the oral bacteria, the oral biome, if you call it. Of the wait, wait, of wait, the, wait, 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 wait. So yeah. Listerine is destroying your microbiome in your mouth. Listerine is horrible. And here's why you people didn't know the mechanism of action. This will, this will kind of trip you out. I got that on my counter, man. You're stressing me okay, out right so, now. All right, you guys, um, you hold Heidi accountable and tell her to throw <laughs> the Listerine away. Okay. Yeah, right. So here's the thing. When you kill off the bacteria here in the mouth, right, what is it that the bacteria does? Well, it actually takes plants. It helps break down the um, the nitrates and nitrites in there and it gets the precursor for nitric oxide that develops in our body to help us with controlling blood pressure so oh, what did i just so say using listerine would over the course of time have a negative effect on blood pressure oh boy okay I well i didn't know that every time i talk to you i'm just, I, my list my list gets longer <laughs> Oh, man. All right. That was great. Thanks for that question, Lee. Anonymous in Montana says, Dr. Mark and Heidi, I'm a homeschooling mom of four, and I love your podcast. Thank you, Anonymous. She says she has a 16-year-old son who doesn't sleep well and has horrible mood swings. Any thoughts uh, on things that you can help us or things that will help us both survive this stage? We'd appreciate it. Could you also address the topic of masturbation? I've heard some say it's normal and natural, even a necessary part of development. Others say it's a sin, which is right. And how do I talk to him about it? I can't be the only mom struggling with a teenage boy in puberty. Well, you're not. And um, this kind of question is one that probably needs to be talked about more. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you and salute you on being a homeschool mom. That is amazing. And so I know that. Yes, it really is. We're golf clapping for you right now. Perfect. Uh, I would give you a standing ovation and, and make you stand yes. up in the crowd because that's an honorable thing to do. You have an opportunity to yes. train yeah. kids in the way they should go. I've heard that before in scripture, right? Um, yes. But yes. here's the thing with your son. When they reach this pubescent age, uh, mood swings are going to be profound as part of this um, hormone bombardment that they get. And I think even for the mom out there, you might even think about a reverse of menopause and ladies, you know, sometimes ladies have mood speed swings when they get into menopause too. Uh, and you're like, what's going on? So I think, you know, from your son's perspective, a good heart to heart talk about the mood would be good um, on why and maybe how to give him some tools to sort of bring the mood back under control. When you look at mood too, as a general rule, something inside of a person, if they're edgy, if they're anxious, mm. there's something that's unsettled. And so I think you got to go back to the basics of just overall health, physically, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, right? And and go down the pathway and make sure that your son has those necessary vitamins and minerals that we've talked about many times in here, because that can make all the difference in the world. Like the vitamin D we just talked about. Could that help? Yes. Could omega-3s to reduce the inflammation and brain inflammation help? Yes. Could things like magnesium help? You betcha they can. B vitamins, et cetera, to help with production of these neurotransmitters. Um so look at all those angles with your son. The second part of that question with the masturbation issue, I, I, I really, it makes me a little uncomfortable to say that that's a normal part of things, you know, because it's really part of exploration into manhood and womanhood development, of course, is going to lead to that at some point. Let's just not kid ourselves. But here's the thing. It is all about the habitual nature of that. It's all about the fantasy world of that. It's all about that creating a distorted relationship with this young man's future spouse. And I think those things have to be really addressed. Uh, some people would say it's a sin. Okay, I get that. Uh, however, you know, he who is without stone or she who is without sin cast for stone, right? So let's don't come at the young man with that. I think that would not be the wise thing to do. I would come at the young man with an honesty and say, why are you doing this? What are you thinking when you're doing this? 
and then talk to him about the health of a, of a, of a good sexual relationship with a God-centered, God-chosen partner. Mm. It's also, I think, uh, you know, important. And I, I love that you're saying that that's, uh, so much of this is intention, right? What we don't mm-hmm. want to do is get into a pattern of lust and pornography and all those things. And right. I remember my husband having conversations with our sons, you know, over the years, just saying, listen, do you want to have a great sex, wi- a sex life with your wife? And of course, you know, absolutely that they wanted that. And he was like, then, hey, don't do porn. Stay away from it. And we know that one thing will inevitably lead to the other. And so to me, I agree with you. It goes back to it's it's about much more than a physical response or even a physical stressor has to do with a lot of what we are allowing in our minds and what is uh, what is motivating that behavior. All right. We've got time for one more today. And I'm trying to think here's a question who a listener is asking about the benefits of MCT oil. So tell us a little bit about what MCT oil is. You and I were talking about this a little bit before the show. I put it in my coffee along with some collagen and a few other things every single morning. Tell us a little bit about MCT oil. Well, MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides or medium chain fats, let's call it. And the good thing about MCTs is they actually bypass the normal digestion process and they can be converted very quickly into ketones, which are bodies that can use fat as fuel, right? So we can get the ketosis creation quicker by using medium chain triglycerides, which is good for our bodies. Our bodies actually do really well working on ketosis or ketone operations as their main energy source. They actually show up, these medium chain triglycerides, in things like coconut oil, which is fascinating. Uh, Sometimes there's some found in meats as well. It is great to add to your coffee. It's a great source of free fuel. It works very well. The only negative I've seen behind this is if you get too much, too fast, you can get a little bit of loose stool. Yeah, I've noticed too that uh, mm-hmm. when I take it, I feel like my brain works better. I mean, to me, right. I always look at it like it's almost like brain fuel, especially. It so is. I will drink that when I'm com- you know coming into the office. I'm going to put that in my coffee. Sometimes I even put it in in my tea. I love uh, there's Laird's. It's a creamer. You can get it. I mean, you can get it anywhere. But I usually get mine at Costco, and it has MCT oil in it and a few other things. And I think just the idea, and I love that you have promoted this so well at the show, is to say, hey, let's let's create healthy habits going oh, yeah. into 2024. So instead of setting up setting ourselves up for failure by like, we'll set the bar way up here, there are little things that you can do. Getting a good uh, MC toy, t- MCT oil and adding it to your smoothies or to your coffee yeah. uh, and all of the things that you've suggested today, so important. Uh, vitamin D, these are no brainers, you guys. Uh, and, the, and they will make a huge, big difference in your life. Dr. Mark, can you hang out for a few more minutes for happy hour? I've got a couple more questions, but I'm out of time for the regular show today. And I've got, I mean, Janita has a great question. I got a couple more. I'd like to, to uh, pick it up in happy hour. Are you game? Yes, ma'am. Let's do it. All right. Hey, you guys, I'm out of time for the regular show today. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this encourages you. Please keep writing to us. We literally have hundreds of questions in the queue. We love hearing from you and you can reach out to us directly at HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. That's where you put those questions and that's where we pick them up for Dr. Mark. You can also reach out to Dr. Mark Sherwood. They have an incredible facility right there in Oklahoma. We have taken advantage of it. I've told you before, our daughter just got the results back from an uh, dietary antigen test, which is really going to change her life. And I think uh, it's just awesome. We get to work with people that we love and who we know love us. And I think you guys are going to be really blessed. You can find out more information and check out the supplements and all things that uh, Dr. Mark and Dr. Michelle have available by going to Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. Again, this podcast is sponsored by MyPillow. Don't forget to check it out. They have an awesome sale happening on their mattresses right now. If you guys want to get a good night's sleep, MyPillow is a great solution for that. And a portion of that purchase will come back to the Heidi St. John podcast. So again, don't forget, go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code Heidi and save a whopping big up to 50, maybe even 60% off those mattresses right now. Have a great day, everybody. And I will see you right back here again except for happy hour. I see you right now. Everybody else, I'll see you right back here again on Monday at the intersection of faith and culture.